Welcome to the Real Estate Show with your real estate and mortgaging team, Terry Kalakos and Eleni Akrivos on CJAD 800. And a happy Sunday afternoon, everyone. It is currently 106. The skies are gray, but the sun is shining here in the studio. Me and Eleni are uh, excited to be talking to you again about the federal budget. Welcome to The Real Estate Show. I'm your host, Terry Kalakos, chartered mortgage broker and president of Northeast Mortgages, as well as founder of the Northeast Group of Companies. Uh, joining me, we have my beautiful co-host, Eleni Akrivos, chartered real estate broker and president of Northeast Realties. How are you doing, Eleni? I'm excellent. Yeah? Yep. You're having a good weekend? Excellent. Can't <laughs> complain. Even though it's rainy and gray, I'm like super happy. Today, we're going to be continuing our discussion from last week, the liberal budget, which was announced, and uh, how it's going to be affecting the real estate and mortgage market. Don't forget, you can always join the conversation by calling in with your questions at 514-790-0800 or texting in. Uh, to 514-800. You can also watch us and comment on Facebook Live at facebook.com slash Northeast Mortgages. Or if you haven't done so already, which you should be doing, because it's like shameful if you haven't, <laughs> newsonthego.ca. That is our YouTube channel where uh, this show is basically, um, it lives and breathes and uh, you can get to see all the past uh, shows and all the exciting and fun things that we do behind the scenes uh, during the uh, commercial breaks. Before we get started, uh, I do want to just uh, kind of go over a little bit uh, about the federal budget. Uh, I do want to go over the big ticket items. Uh, the budget is fo uh, focused mostly on seniors and skilled workers and millennials. That's who it's really going to be uh, helping out. Uh, we had uh, last week uh, Tom Kimmich, a uh, member of parliament of the conservative party, uh, party who, uh, who uh, toned in, chimed yeah. in, chimed in, chimed in, chimed in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what he basically uh, thought about it and uh, it was a little bit of a uh, kind of uh yeah he summed it up pretty well yeah yeah i got uh, i got a lot of emails and uh, and and messages this week uh, from different people who heard the show last week and they they said you need to smile more okay cuz i was i was very uh, i was yeah. very angry last week but anyways yeah. all right if you guys are ready here it is the uh, the fast and furious uh budget we went over the uh, the big ticket items last week i'm just going to go over them once again so 1.25 billion over three years for first-time home buyers incentive, along with other measures uh, that will ease Canadians' entry into the real estate market. 1.7 billion over five years for new skilled training uh, tax credits. 5.6 billion over 10 years for broadband in northern and rural communities. And as I mentioned last week, this is good because I actually I'm going to get you know high-speed internet at my country <laughs> house, which I don't have right now. Uh, 1 billion to increase affordable uh, affordability of high-cost drugs for rare diseases. 4.7 billion in new money. Uh, for indigenous communities, uh, 3.9 billion in compensation for supply managed farmers who are losing a share uh, of their dairy, egg, and poultry market after two trade deals uh, have kind of gone in place over the last little while. 1.8 billion for uh, retirees, including support for low income seniors. 6 billion for research in health and sciences. 1.2 billion, including a net 100 million increase in international. Uh, assistance uh, and five thousand dollar incentive for the purchase of an electric vehicle with a value of forty five thousand dollars or less and there is so much more including the fact that they are raising the um uh wrap in other words the home buyer's plan from twenty five thousand dollars to thirty five thousand dollars which is my I did favorite it in part. under look at that <laughs> I, I did it in under a minute there you go yeah Anyways, all right. Um, so what have people been telling you this week, Eleni? Um, honestly, not much. People do not seem to know, you know, like, I think there's a lot of noise around it. I think, and I don't want to say that it's a distraction due to the fact that we are having elections in six to seven months from now. Um, you know, mind you, some of the incentives are positive, m mainly, in my opinion, the home buyers plan, which we're going to get into. Uh, some of the other stuff, you know, we're, we're starting to hear from economists. I'm starting to read a lot of articles that, that are saying, you know, you know, these incentives are not going to be a game changer. Yeah. However, again, from just a client's point of view, a customer point of view, homeowner point of view, you know, they think it might kind of, you know, do something to the market. 
but there's bigger issues. There's supply issues. So there's not a lot of homes. There's home, like the real issue is home affordability. And yeah. so the, the reason for these incentives, the, the federal government came up, uh, came out with these was to make homes more affordable. Well, is th- it really doing that? Yeah. So? And, and, you know, if, if I look at uh, our industries, uh, th- you know, what's basically being said, first of all, when we're looking on the mortgage brokerage front, um, everyone that's in the mortgage brokerage community and in the mortgage community as a whole, including the banks. So here we're, I mean, we're united in this message. It does nothing. Okay. As, uh, aside from raising, you know, the, uh, the home buyer's plan from 25 to $35,000, it literally does nothing for anyone else. So that's, that's the first thing. Um, the other thing that we've basically heard, and this is something that the conservatives are basically saying right now, that all of this is basically smoke and mirrors to take the focus away from what's really happening with SNC Lavalin and mm-hmm. all the kind of corruption and all that stuff that's going on that's hitting the liberals right now, which, you know, I don't want this to kind of turn into a political show. I already have like some texts that are coming in, which I'm not going to. I'm not going to entertain right now because there is text coming in uh, regarding the liberals and I'm not uh, we're not here to to bash anyone. It's Uh, the real estate show. It's the real estate show. So we want (laughs) to kind of look specifically at what's happening in real estate. So, again, if you want to join the conversation, don't forget, you can call us at 514-790-0800 or you can text in to 514-800. And again, you can also watch us and comment on Facebook Live at Facebook.com slash Northeast Mortgages or slash Northeast Realties. And you can also find us online um, on uh, newsonthego.ca. And that is our YouTube channel where you could see all the fun and exciting things that are kind of happening behind the scenes. But kind of, you know, again, going back to what we were discussing, right, a little bit earlier, I've actually had clients right now, and we, we, sort of talked about this last week where we're kind of mm-hmm. saying, well, you know what, instead of buying now, I'm going to wait and see what's going to happen later on. I'm going to wait and see what's going to happen uh, with these tax credits, with not the tax credits, excuse me, with the, mm-hmm. the money that the government is supposed to give. Because part of it, and I think that this is really what we're going to be touching on in this show, is who does this money that the government is going to be giving first-time home buyers really help? Who is it really impacting? Is it helping the actual consumer? Is it helping the government? Or is it actually helping, uh, you know, the construction companies? So yeah. the, the and if you want to chime in on this, uh, if we're looking at the actual uh, incentive that we're talking about here, the government wants to give for existing property. So if you're buying a property and you're a first-time home buyer, they're willing to give you 5% towards the per, uh, purchase of this existing property. Um, the specifics about this haven't been released yet, but one thing is for sure, you're putting 5%, they're gonna give you 5%, which means now you have a down payment of 10%. And the whole idea behind it is you're gonna be doing some equity sharing. The other thing is, is that if you're going to be buying a new construction, instead of them giving you only 5%, now they're looking to give you 10%. So again, you're coming in with 5%, they're giving you 10. It's the equivalent of you having a down payment of 15%. So I really want to get into this uh, later on in the, as, as we get into the show. Uh, I'd love to hear your opinion on this and what you kind of think about it, Eleni. I also want to hear the opinion of uh, all our listeners. So again, uh, feel free to call us 514-790-0800 or text at 514-800. Now we're off to the CJD Traffic Center with Kira Yeager. Just got a call from a CJD 800 a listener who is out and near St. Lazar on 40 westbound just before uh, the St. Laurent exit. Uh, apparently there is some debris in the left-hand lane. So do be aware of that if you're in the area. And if you're up north right now, we have uh, some delays to mention. Through St. Adele, Laurentia, Nauterud South, quite busy. 10-minute delay. And then again, another delay. Through okay, so you want to you wanna get into... Um, Let's let so let's get into uh, number two where we say okay what's the so you introduced a little bit of of the incentives but let's get into the pros and cons and the details of what we know so far mm-hmm. right of the shared equity because I do feel like people do not understand it this is my feeling mm-hmm. so I can give my opinion and you know we have more experience because we're in the industry so we can well let's let's start going through the question so when we come back I'll I'll, I'll go to the the first one here. Eleni, do you feel so that one? Do you think you're a pretty healthy eater? Do you 
the first one then you could bounce it back to me with number two if you want I think we kind of did the number one already. If you have trouble did we? Kind of. Okay, so bounce it, bounce it to me right away. Yeah, I would really, yeah, let's do it number two. Okay. Let's iron out the pros and cons. Okay, sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah, this is like, uh, I had to kind of like really like punch it because it was going to turn very political very quickly. So. So everyone, what's going on in Facebook land? What do you guys uh, uh, think of the new budget? Do you guys have any questions, comments, queries? I don't know, whatever. Ideas. Ideas. Of what's going to actually happen. But I do feel, again, that people just don't know enough about it. I don't actually think that they're putting it out there as much. I did see, I did notice, I don't know if you guys noticed, on Instagram, I think it was. I don't okay. know if you noticed. Uh, Instagram or Facebook or LinkedIn okay so videos really nicely done videos from the liberal government okay touching Talking on all it. of the budgets so yeah. all the all the points of the budget they made little videos on each one so for example you know the the home buyer incentives they, right. so it's you know you have the the uh, prime minister speaking and little you know nice uh, really nice videos. so obviously you know promoting the incentives so I don't know if you guys have seen those videos there, I saw it on on LinkedIn, I believe. Um, well, let, I mean, let's call a spade a spade. I mean, there is a few interesting kind of things about the budget. Mm -hmm. um, it does help quite a few people, and like I said, I think that it's a great idea. The fact that they raised it from twenty five to uh, thirty five thousand, the home buyers plan. But could it, it have literally gone further? does not. It, they could have so gone a lot further, and yeah. it doesn't help existing homeowners yeah. or people that have already bought and why doesn't it help them Be i don't know why because why doesn't it help them i think well the cover problem your ears people i yeah, was about to say something nasty why doesn't it help them well first of all there's we had talked about this i think a mm -hmm. year ago on the show which was that because of the mortgage rules people who want to move up to another property cannot do so exactly. and because they cannot do so they're not putting up their homes for sale that is causing the low supply so the real issue is the supply. There's not enough homes for sale. Yeah. And then the ones that are for sale, the prices have gone up because of the low supply. Yeah. Exactly. Which makes the homes less affordable. So it's the affordability th which they try to address. But right? think of it, it well think of it like this. You think that this is going to actually do anything to help the supply and demand? No, I think it's going to continue to keep the demand low. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, it's going to keep the supply low because people still are not able to upgrade their homes. They're not able to exactly. sell. They're not the able to buy anything. The problem is still there. It doesn't the correct that still problem. There. But they're so saying who does it help? It helps the construction industry, yeah. right? Because now all of a sudden, people again, maybe the liberals had something to do with this with SNC Level A, although SNC is not actually uh, building any of these new developments. But what ends up happening is it's helping new development. Why are they giving a higher incentive to people that are that are buying? properties new properties yeah. oh with your real estate and mortgaging team terry kalakos and elenia krivos on cjad 800. You're listening to The Real Estate Show, and today we're continuing last week's talk about the new liberal uh, budget and how this will affect current and future homeowners. Uh, Lenny? Exactly. So Terry was just giving a little bit of an intro yeah. on the incentives. We really want to dive in and look at the details of what we have so far. Um, so Terry, let's iron out the pros and the cons of the new budget. So for example, the first time home buyers plan, uh, we'll, we'll go through that one quickly because that's, I think, the most positive that we've seen. Yeah. So when people are using their RSPs, they can now use uh, each individually. So a couple can each use 35000 from their RRSPs to purchase their first home, you know, for their down payment tax free. So pros, cons about that. So, um, you know, as we've seen kind of house prices go up over the last little while, I think that it's a great idea that, you know, I've, I'm a huge proponent of this. It's a great idea. We're raising it from twenty five to thirty five thousand dollars. Excellent. OK, I love it. I think it's great. Whether or not individuals are actually going to have the thirty five thousand dollars 
that's a different conversation. Yeah, that's okay? because what I was thinking. Typically, when you're looking at first time home buyers that are in their late 20s, 30s, they don't necessarily have that. Now, it does open up, and especially when you're looking at agencies like ours, uh, it opens up the possibility of creating very interesting um, tax benefits and restructuring down payments in such a way so that they could ultimately have that $35,000 each. And this is part of what we do, right? This is what makes Northeast Northeast and makes us so special is the fact that we have teams in place that helps people structure down payments and helps people kind of rebuild credit yeah. and help them in all aspects. So okay, what, so yeah. I've said this before, we don't look at a, a transaction, whether it's mortgage or real estate rela uh, related, um, where most banks and mortgage brokers are only gonna look at an interest rate. We don't care about that. We care about the rate. We wanna make sure that you have a rate, but it's maybe third, fourth, fifth down the line, right? So we're gonna look at the whole transaction in its entirety, including the down payment, how is it structured? So I think that this, uh, the fact that they're raising it from 25 to 35,000, it's going to give our clients a, a, a nice boost. Yeah. The other thing is, is you know, CMHC is uh, looking to provide a 5% incentive on existing homes uh, and a 10% uh, incentive on new construction homes. So they're calling this a shared equity program, okay? So, so first just, time, uh, I'm just yeah. gonna stop you right there, sure. okay? Because so the thing is, you know this stuff yeah. inside out and you're, you know, you're, you're throwing out something new there, shared equity program, okay? Yeah. I'm pretty sure the reason why we're, you know, people are not giving their opinions on this is because they don't know what that is, okay? So if you can just explain to people, so the government is promising to add, okay? Yeah. You're gonna have 5% down, the government will add another 5%. If you're buying a new construction, they're gonna add 10%, but they're gonna, it's gonna be in part of a shared equity mortgage. What is that? Can it's you explain not, it's it It's not people? a shared equity mortgage. What it basically means is, it's like as if I come to you and I say, Eleni, you know what? I'm gonna give you some money to, for you to buy your house. And when you sell that property, I'm expect I'm expecting you to give to me more money than what I gave you. Okay? So you actually have a claim or, or like exactly. A part so claim. we are sharing in the growth of that property. So that's what a shared equity program is. And anyone that's really looked into this, they're basically actually there was a couple of people last week who texted in. And they basically said this is kind of like a well disguised a scam. scam, you know. <laughs> um, it, I don't think it's a well-disguised scam. I think it will help to help a lot of people. Uh, but do at I think cost? it's... Uh, exactly, at what cost? And I think that, you know, if, if you listen to me long enough, uh, you know that I'm the type of person that I'll always say there's pros and cons to everything, you know? And you got to kind of look at the pros and cons of everything, whether, you know, there's, there's pros and cons to getting a mortgage. There's pros and cons to getting a house. There's pros and cons to being a renter. Fixed so, or variable. Fixed or variable. Pros and cons both ways. So you got to kind of really look at the details of everything. Unfortunately, we're only going to know what the details about this are in September or October yeah. of next year. But can you which, give us an example, though? Which puts us... Yeah. right into the elections yes right which is not not very uh, not very fun so just to kind of continue on what i was saying so first time home buyers that are going to be earning less than one hundred and twenty thousand dollars uh family income per year which again now we're we're limiting the population okay we're basically putting like this box um they are going to be able to receive uh, five percent down payment for existing property. So if you want to buy an existing home, you're getting five percent, or you're going to be getting ten percent for new constructions. Now, why all? And it's to a maximum uh, purchase of uh, four times of your income. Okay, so now we're talking about if it's one hundred and twenty thousand dollars of income, multiply that by four. Now we're at four hundred and eighty. So the maximum price of the purchase can only be four hundred and eighty, uh, and the money has to be paid back when your property is sold and the minimum down payment still remains at 5%. Now, the way that the liberals basically explained this is they said, well, we're doing this because we want to put some relief in the stress test. BS, you know, not to say what I actually want to say. But hold on, I'm going to, so I'm going to, I'm going to play the devil's advocate here. They're yeah. saying that, you know, because they're adding the 5%, it's going to reduce the mortgage amount and thereby reducing the payment okay, of, of the uh, purchaser by about 200, 228 per month. So they could, that... have, they could have done that by stretching the amortizations back up to 30, uh, 30 exactly, years. Exactly, but that would have opened it up to everybody. And exactly. like you said before, <laughs> they're kind of limiting it. And that's what I feel with this. And, yeah. you know, I don't know if you agree, but they're kind of limiting it, limiting it to certain people within certain 
you know, incomes and then, you know, you can only buy up to 480. So, exactly. but will it, will some people benefit from it? Um, yes, there will be people that are going to benefit from it, but the people that actually need the relief and need to actually benefit from it are not. And that's existing homeowners, mm -hmm. right? This is, we've talked about this before. Existing homeowners are the ones that are feeling the brunt of all of these changes, all of these stress tests, all of this stuff that's going on. Um, we're putting all our faith and all the weight on new homeowners as opposed to helping existing homeowners. So people are not able to refinance their mortgages, okay, because they don't qualify under the new rules. People are not able to consolidate debt. You know, you have someone that's paying $5,000 a month. They want to consolidate it down to two, but they can't because they don't qualify under the new stress test. So these are all things that the government, for some reason, is completely blind to. And, you know, Tom Kimmich last week, this is <laughs> this is exactly what he was talking about as well. You know, so yeah. it's it's really, really unfork, uh, unfortunate. But um, anyways, as far as I'm concerned, the people that this will help is going to be developers. It's going to be builders. And it was, we're going to get into it a little bit more when we return. You're listening to The Real Estate Show. And today we're continuing our discussion from last week about the federal budget. The Real Estate Show is brought to you by Northeast Mortgages. It's springtime. Time for a change. Lease a 2019 Mercedes-Benz A250 Formatic hatchback for only $4.99 a month. And for a limited time, get prepaid maintenance and three payments waived. Take one for a spin at your Mercedes-Benz dealer. Chic. Luxury. Comfort. Classy. On trend. Accessorize. Okay, so so there's actually a couple of interesting stuff. Uh, this is from Christian. Do you need a se uh, do you need to be separated or divorced to use the wrap um, from the budget? A breakdown of a marriage will allow you to use the wrap again. Yes, that's actually a good point. That's, that's a good question. A, something because the divorce rates are going up. That's something I actually think is really good. So we'll get into that one. Do you think uh, for, for the wrap? I mean, I heard this coming from the Canadian Real Estate Association. They had uh, pushed or asked for the government to allow for mill millennials to borrow from their parents' RSPs. It didn't happen, obviously, because you That's mentioned. Retarded. I know, but you mentioned that they don't have it in their RSPs, right? I can't see the R word. Why? Why? <laughs> So I know, I'm just I'm just throwing it out there just to get your opinion. Obviously, this is not happening. But for those who don't have Apparently it, Apparently, it is not uh, politically correct for me to say the R word as Barab just. We grew up hearing that word all the time, so it's kind of like. If you ask some of my elementary school teachers, they can confirm to you that I might have actually been a little <laughs> challenged. So yeah, I actually have... one of my elementary school teachers. I'll never forget this guy. Just a little tangent. Uh, do you remember, me and Eleni went to elementary school together, even though she doesn't remember me in elementary school. Do you remember, um, oh my god, the grade three teacher? I know you were there only I in grade six. I was only there for grades five, six. Five, six. Anyways, the, uh, my grade three teacher, uh, during parent-teacher interviews, asked my mother. She said to her, she goes, you know, Terry mentioned to me that he had fallen off of his bike. <laughs> Is it possible that he might have hit his head? And he might have some brain damage because it's not no way that he is. Uh, why is no one laughing? I found that funny. <laughs> They're like very interesting. I'm just sharing on Facebook. So I do feel that again, people are not are not you know getting it, are not understanding. And I think it's it's only for a limited, it's only for the first time buyers. But then again, you know, again, this people who are selling. Who do you need when you're selling your property? You need buyers, right? Absolutely. So I do feel like maybe they will have a false hope that they're going to get more buyers because of this. I'm not sure. Because what, what this here's what I think. I know buyers, first time buyers, and we're gonna get into that after the break about new construction. Um, they do not want the old homes. They wanna live in the West Island, but guess what? They don't want an old home. So where are they going? They're going to Vaudreuil, they're going to buy new condos new construction yeah which there's not a lot of on the island other than the condos so i ki I kind of agree with the incentive though to give the 10 percent for the new construction because that's where the first time buyers are headed it, so it kind of makes sense there's just fyi there's a caller and there's like a bunch of text Good. that came in awesome. so 
So people are starting to get interested oh, in this topic. I'm gonna have to uh, excuse myself for two seconds. Go ahead. Uh, I'm sure that everyone in Facebook land would rather see Marav than me. So Our producer please. extraordinaire. Ladies and gentlemen, we have Marav. Marav is there. As her parents say, Marav the Betrav. They <laughs> actually call me Mary. Oh, they do? My whole family. Mary Cousins. Barry. Oh, I didn't know Parents. that. Oh, they don't call you Marav. Mary. Oh, nice. It's <laughs> Interesting. So it's like me. Everybody calls me Helen. My family. Your family calls yeah. you Helen? Yeah. Yeah, me and my cousins, you say Marav. They're like, who's that? Interesting. Yeah, yeah. That is so weird. So we both have dual personalities, Marav and I? Yes. 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 <laughs> so I'm Marav Mary. And you're Eleni Marav Helen. Marav, the, the mortgage... M M mortgage. I was just thinking that's really cool, actually. And three uh, M actually. M yeah. cube. Morale, Mary, Marciano. My middle name you is could actually Mary. Be something like J L O M. You know. My M grandmother's name was Mary. Yeah, hey, and my grandmother's name was was Eleni. What? No joke. Yeah. I yeah. see. We're well, sisters from another mystic. Yeah. That is so cool. Oh man. So who's buying a new construction? That's what I want to know. All the young people. You know what? Nobody wants moon. to buy. Uh, I've, you know what, I've always bought older buildings, you know that, and renovated and renovated, you guys do the same thing, that's been sort of our thing, and I have to say, with looking at all the new constructions out there, I'm kind of, Me I'm too. getting the bug. Me too. And I'm getting the bug, and the kids are getting older, and maybe if we're less people in the house, I'm like, you know what, let's sell the big house. And let's get something new construction. So I don't know. I'm looking at it. still small. You're already yeah. kicking them out. They only need a little room to, um, to do their homework. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know what? Poor there's kids, a lot man. of there's a lot of nice projects in Montreal. I have yeah. to say. I mean, I and would, you know what it is? I find the new projects. They're yeah. building it resort style. Yeah. The whole building is like feels like a hotel. You've got the pool with the trees, That's and nice. and you've got the shops downstairs. Like some of these. Some of these yeah. things are incredible, like the new project Royal Mount. Yeah. It's a lifestyle they're building, like. Well, it's catering to millennials because yeah. millennials want to have everything you know, nearby. Arms reach. Yeah, they'd rather live in a 500 square foot apartment, but yet you have everything. You have an yeah. area where you have Wi-Fi, where you can work with your laptop. I think I'm gonna just become a millennial. You and can't go uh, back and. <laughs> I can. Can I become? Can I just redo and be, like become a first time buyer again and and get to you know. You would have to rent for five years. I would to have to divorce. That's what they're divorce? saying. I would have to divorce. Or, and then or rent for five years. Or rent, you rent for, five for five years. years. Okay. And you're not a homeowner for five years? Then I can do the, 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 the rap program again. Okay. Look at this guy. He does serious news. <laughs> We're saying hi to Luciana Papia. <laughs> Honestly, I think it's it's a really exciting time for, for real estate. It is. I know. I know. But you know what's going to be more important, which we didn't even talk about? It's going to be more important to get a good mortgage broker, a good real estate broker. I'm seeing a lot of new uh, mortgage online products. I don't know if you've seen them. I've just, they've kind of come. But also uh, uh, a lot of the young people feel comfortable now online. with everything online. And it's I, normal. Yeah. It's a new it's a new way of doing but things. But with the, with the new rules and the new incentives, I do feel that you need to actually, like Terry said, like you can't just get a mortgage anywhere. You, you, you need the advice, I think. No, the consultation. It's because the way that commercials and banks have always worked it's always been the rate the rate the rate but then when they break that mortgage and they face a fifteen thousand dollar penalty they realize what was the real cost of that low rate yeah. they saved fifteen twenty dollars a month and now that they want to move or divorce or get transferred to uh, to Toronto or whatever now they realize suddenly hey that low monthly payment actually came out of came out of price yeah. So yeah, and shopping for your mortgage online, again, I, I think there's a lot of new stuff out there. I would say be careful. Because it's like, you know, you're not getting the entire calculation. Yes, you're not getting all the fine print. No. The no. devil is in the details. Yes, yes, absolutely. There's a lot of details missing from a lot of this, by the way. Like all, everything we're talking about. Yeah. So I can, I can see why people... And Don't what's know. worse is that they came out with this incentive and didn't give the details of the conditions associated to it. You imagine I tell them so they give you money, yeah. but I'll tell you after how much it's going to cost you in interest, how you're going to pay me back, what are the conditions, are you allowed to sell in the first five years, am I going to limit oh, yeah. you on that? We don't know any of the conditions associated to that. Yeah. Crazy. But then we have to, you know, we have to decide who to vote on. 
and then we'll go. Once they see the poles moving in a certain yeah. direction, they're gonna give you the details of that. Oh God, it's going to be interesting. Oh, Terry, how rude, Let me man. Share this. Uh, uh, okay. We've lost Marav. We lost the producer. Oh, we told the people everything they needed to know. Don't worry. Oh, look, she's running back. <laughs> back to master. <laughs> Not enough time. Wait. Welcome back, everyone. You're listening to The Real Estate Show. I'm your host, Terry Kalakos, and with me in studio is my beautiful co-host, Eleni Akrivos. We have texts. We have callers. Let's go to Suzanne from Montreal. Selling house needs new furnace. Yeah, I, I don't know if I'm going to formulate this question correctly. but Let's try. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm putting my house up for sale. I live on the West Island okay. in this summer. Yep. Everything has been done. Um, I inspect my furnace regularly. The gentleman came again the other day and he said it's in great condition, but he says it's 28 years old. Mm -hmm. It's passed all inspections and I'm not sure whether I invest the money to change it prior to selling it. Do I even do a re renting of it? Do I finance it? What do I do? What would you do? So I have, I have, let me let Eleni answer this and then I'll, I'll give you my opinion on it as well. Okay. Ho hopefully it, it doesn't differ from Eleni seeing as we're partners. <laughs> Go for it, yeah, Eleni. Well, you know what? I'm, I'm going to tell you my perspective because I work with buyers. It's yeah. been 16 years and I know buyers inside out. I know exactly, you know, what, you know, what they're going to think. So first of all, I just have a, a small question. Is the rest of your house very renovated, move in ready, or it's just like, you know, yeah. and good, Yes. Okay. I just finished all the bathrooms. The roof's being changed in a month. It's a great house. It's just Perfect. The, the furnace, and now I'm like, okay. I don't know. Okay, so you know what? In that case, here, here's what I would do. You're going to fill out what's called a seller's declaration when you sell the house. And you're going to name, you know, you're going to list all the renovations, everything you've done. Um, I would basically... You know, put it on put it on your seller's declaration. The furnace is 20. It's going to ask you what's the year of the furnace, and you're going to say that you've you know um, serviced it. It's 28 years old, and it's probably going to need to be changed. Just declare it. Should you change the furnace? I'm going to tell you no, because there's some new buyers that might want a special furnace. They might want, you know, since since they are changing it, they might want to um, put something in that that they really want. Okay, so you because the rest of your house is renovated. Just declare it. People are going to know they're going to have that expense coming up. And uh, it's uh, that that's how I would do it. You know, it's funny you mentioned that because the gentleman that came, because we have dual energy with oil. And I said, should I take it out? He says, you know what? If you change it, maybe the new owners might want the one with an electrical uh, dual energy. Definitely. Mode. Yeah. Okay. I want to hear Terry's response now. So uh, I'm. I'm actually. I was sitting here and I'm going. Thank you know. Thank God, Eleni's like on the same page with me because <laughs> okay. I I never like to go against what Eleni says because uh, she she opinions. beats me up at the <laughs> office. I have like multiple wives and Eleni's one of them. <laughs> um, but um, I I agree with that. You know, I've always said that there's certain investments or there's certain things in your house that are going to support the value of your house and there's other things that are going to actually raise the value of your house you know when you do your roof uh it doesn't raise the value of your house it supports the value of your house so if your house was going to sell for four hundred and twenty-five thousand, um and it has a new roof it's going to sell for 425 unless you put some sort of like solar powered i don't know roof with shingles a tesla roof or something and maybe that'll increase the value a little bit but for the most part it's not but if you have a very old roof then what it's going to do is you're going to have a buyer that's going to come in while well, your house should have been 425 and we're going to re remove, you know, $8,000 for the roof okay, and it's up not, to you. Not yeah. Me down. yeah, exactly. So this is the type of uh, thing that would probably support the value of your house. And that's how I see it. I think that's what Eleni is basically saying as well. And, uh, and that's it. But my advice to you, Susan, more than that, you just got to pick up the phone and call us at the office and Eleni will take care yeah. of it from A to Z. Yeah, because I'm that I'm at that point right now because you wonder why where do I stop? Yeah, house, absolutely. You know? Call yeah. us; we'll be we'll be happy to uh, to help okay. you out, Susan. Thanks for okay. the call. I appreciate it. Thanks very much. Cheers. 
Uh, we also have a text here uh, that came in. In your opinion, is there a reason uh, that the government is helping builders? That's from Sean. Uh, well, Sean, uh, let's think about it. A new construction, uh, they put in place, you know, there's obviously, <clears throat> excuse me, jobs that are being created, which means that there's taxes that people are paying. Uh, there's GST, PST that, um, that's being uh, generated in new construction. There's about a million and one different things that uh, the government is benefiting from if they're going to support uh, the builder. So I would say that's the reason. Um, there's another text that came in is uh, if there is a drop in the value of the property, does the shared equity program also share in the loss? Will costs be calculated or will the government get 5% or 10% on any home improvements and for uh, notarial and mortgage fees and welcome taxes? That's from Bram in DDO. Bram? Your question is as good as my question because that's exactly <laughs> what I want to know as well. Uh, there is a lot of factors that uh, I don't think even the government has really um, thought about um, as far as I'm concerned. They are saying that it's a shared equity, which means that if the property goes down in value, then the amount that you have to pay back will go down in value. But I don't think that anyone from the liberal government is going to be rolling up their sleeves and coming into your house to help you actually paint the place and do some renovations. So they're going to actually be benefiting from any work and renovations and sweat equity that you're going to put into this property. So, uh, you know, I have my opinions. Uh, when I became a, for, you know, when I was a first-time home buyer, when I was 24 and I bought my fourplex in Hashalaga Mezonev, uh, there was actually uh, subventions that the city was giving. And the subventions were basically, uh, they would give you money to do the facades, they would give you money to do a whole bunch of different things. And a lot of people grabbed them, but there was a lot, when I looked at the rules, there was a lot of things that I saw and I was like, ah, eh, not feeling this. Uh, one of the rules was you couldn't sell your property in five years, for okay. five years. So I don't know. Maybe the government is going to put, you know, I'm just speculating here, yeah. but maybe the government's going to put in stuff like that as well. So, Well, those incentives that you're talking about, by the way, the municipal incentives uh, subsidies do exist. Mm -hmm. uh, I mentioned it on, on a previous show a couple of weeks back. Uh, they have changed. They update them every year and some of them will help current homeowners so for foundation work and other work but again there's a lot of rules and criteria and that's what i think the main thing is that we have to look at the details right and see yeah i agree uh we have uh, another text that came in and we have a caller coming in as well i believe that eleni that spoken that condos as an investment is a bad idea citing many owners rent their condos uh, often having to take money from their pocket in order to meet payments and comments. We agree. I don't think that Eleni, I don't think that at any point Eleni said that condos were a no, good investment. Uh, no, to the investment. contrary, yeah. we were talking about a CMHC report uh, stating that uh, most people who rent them out uh, are in the negative. Absolutely, 100%. It's a terrible, terrible, terrible investment in many, many ways. Um, it's very rare that you're going to be able to actually buy a condo and actually turn a profit. In the if, Montreal market, just in to the, be clear. Exactly, because, in yeah. the Montreal market. But I will put a little bit of a uh, kind of like asterisk on that. There are markets in Montreal that you could buy properties that are undervalued, condos, mm -hmm. and then you end up turning around and, and selling it, uh, sorry, and, and renting it out higher. Mm -hmm. uh, as well, there are certain markets that will allow you to do Airbnb and all that kind of stuff. When we're looking at the core, that is not permitted anymore. You know, a lot of people went out and they bought properties in Tour des Canadiens and stuff like that, thinking that they were going to Airbnb it. Yeah. It's empty. The building it's, is empty. Yeah. Right? I mean, that's uh, that's that's what I've seen. Um, so here's, uh, we have a little bit of time. Uh, very quickly, what would you have loved to see in the federal budget, Eleni? And we only have a little bit of time. Okay. <laughs> we have, yeah, the, the clock's. Yeah, Counting I'm gonna I'm gonna echo what you said. I mean, I'm I do not do mortgages. Terry and, and his team uh, do the mortgages. Uh, I would have liked the 30 year amortization that was a, to to be you know brought back. I did see a few, you know a lot of articles and economists uh, chime in on that. That's what I would have liked to see because that would have helped, like you said, the current homeowners looking to in, you know to get into a bigger house. And guess what? they would be putting their house on the market for sale and that would increase the supply. Exactly. And that's the problem we have right now in Montreal is that the supply is too low. Stay tuned for more talk about the Liberal budget and what the Conservatives think about it. Just having a look at... Um, you gave her literally 30 seconds. The poor oh, no, girl. Sorry. 
<laughs> that was I'm, actually I'm that was actually to... my question. That was something that you were <laughs> supposed to ask me. Sorry. Spot here, spot center, okay. Uh, biggest winners. Do, do we want to get into more? Can about I go builders? to the back? Yeah, go. <laughs> do we want to talk about more about builders or we, no? You did. The, we talked about builders, right? That's that's good. Yeah. Good. Okay. Um, you wanna you wanna go to uh, you wanna go to uh, number ten? Sure. Of course. Uh, as well, do you think there's any truth to the Conservative Party? Okay, well, let's go go to eight. Well, you just talked about you just talked about that. that no, I touched I touched on it a little bit. Do you think that there's no? Any we truth? didn't talk about it. You just said that after the break we were going to be talking about okay, the Conservative so, Party. Okay, so let's yeah. so why don't you why don't you bump in? Why don't you talk about that and uh, party leaders? But we didn't. We didn't there's get an actual. There's an actual really interesting text that just came in as well. Uh, just to let potential condo buyers know, when the land was laid improperly, example slopes towards the building. So in other words, as a negative slope. Uh, even going to APCHQ after three years, APCHQ will always be on the builder's side. We're going to need to spend over two hundred thousand dollars on land, as builders says, uh, not their problem. This is uh, good comment, but de la yeah. Gare Vaudreuil Quorum. Very good builder. comment, and you know what? Maybe we'll do a show about new construction and what you need to know, because that's like a whole other. Yeah. Right. Well, you can you could say that that's uh, but that's a that's a very common problem. Very, I see because it all the time. It's one of the risks of buying. You know, I'm sorry to say. A new construction. Exactly. You know, how good is the builder? Do they have uh, a reputation for you know running after three years? You know. Exactly. Saying, oh, it's not our fault, it's not our problem. Yeah. What are you talking about? Liens? New construction, Liens issues from contractors? No, no, no it's, uh, it's, uh, there was a text that came in, it's, it's uh, just to let potential condo buyers know when the land was laid improperly, example, slopes towards the building, so there's a negative slope, uh, even going to APCHQ after three years, APCHQ will always be on the side of the builder. The thing is, is that when we're talking about negative slopes, okay, even our house, when we bought it, it had a negative slope. It just because it's a year the way that it settles, it settles, and every five years we you have, have to, redo to redo our landscaping yeah. to fix that. Yeah, that's exactly. a very common thing in the West Island, eh, by the way, because nobody does that. Yeah, a few people do it. We redid our whole our landscaping. We had to add yeah. like half a foot of earth yeah. on one side. Yeah, yeah. It comes up on every inspection, by the way. But negative slope. Every inspection. Hmm. Every inspection. There's not like maybe one on two hundred. They've done their their sloping. We had it was more than half a foot. I think yeah, it was a like a foot. A foot. Yeah. But that's. And but sometimes you'll get it on one side, like you don't usually but get, you don't it, on get it on the other. Sometimes side. Sometimes you'll get it in the back and on the side. Yeah, I think it was just on one side. And of in the, the front, it's sure. fine, and on the other side, it's fine. You'll have like two, very very common. So do you want me to? Uh, to get into your There's question? a contaminated soil question also on the care on the Yeah, if it's applicable. On CJAD 800. Oh yeah. Smooth. <laughs> <laughs> Smooth real estate. Thanks for tuning in. Today we're talking about the new liberal budget, which was announced last week, and how it affects existing and future homeowners. Uh, a couple of uh, texts came in. Uh, just to let potential condo buyers know, when the land was laid improperly, example, slopes towards the building. So that would be called a negative slope for those that are listening. Uh, even going to APCHQ after three years, APCHQ will always be on the side of the builder. Uh, we are going to need to spend over $200,000 on land as builder says not their problem uh, I won't get into who it is the builder but uh, they they mentioned the builder here and uh, so yeah so do you see that is that a common problem this property is in Vaudreuil that's a common problem with uh, you know existing homes in the West Island we see it on every inspection mm -hmm. uh, now for new construction that's kind of disturbing to me that a new construction would, would already have, have that because it yeah. usually it's caused with uh, settling so we'll definitely do a show first of all we have one coming up about inspections and about new construction what to inspect but, when you're inspecting yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> but uh i have also heard a lot of uh 
not a lot of, but you know, you do hear horror stories about new construction and, you know, there's the new home warranty, you know, it covers certain things. And then you hear about builders sort of, you know, running off and not, you know, not taking care of certain Which issues. Which is something so. that's very, very dangerous because that does happen and builders do take off and they don't pay the, who they're supposed to pay. And then all of a sudden you end up, you know, now all of a sudden you're in my territory where you end up getting hypotex put on the property, uh, legal hypotex and construction hypotex from yeah. the builder. Even though you've paid your condo, you've done what you need to do. Anyways, we're going to talk about that next week when we're yeah. going to be, uh, our show is going to be what to inspect when you're inspecting uh we have john uh from i don't know where somewhere in uh in this world who has a question about contaminated soil right. hey john right hi sorry they they uh, nobody asked me where it's all good from, so. where are you from john uh, montreal montreal, montreal beautiful north, city uh, montreal north. excellent talk to me john what's going on my friend okay just uh this is uh i saw a property that uh uh, had a you know had a, a buried uh, oil tank okay and it leaked of course yeah and uh, you know the soil was tested in different uh, places yeah you know and uh, so I'm just wondering what are the uh, the what's the uh, the uh, you know the course of action there let's say I were interested in buying this thing what uh, what is that a something that should be considered or should I, that well yeah I mean, yeah so the soil i mean obviously you need to go through a decontamination process uh is this a residential property or is this a commercial property well it's a duplex it's a duplex yeah. okay so it's a residential uh property yeah, okay. yeah, um yeah. you're gonna have issues with the banks okay the the bank is going to be your big obstacle right, and right. whenever there is uh contamination in the soil you have to understand that that really impacts uh, the actual sale price and whether or not someone moving into the future would actually want to buy it, right? So because right. of that, the resale value becomes very questionable right. and the banks don't want to finance it. Now, there is a possibility that depending on what the costs of the decontamination are, that the bank would be willing to look at uh, setting something like this up and giving you um, money towards... Okay, but let's say, uh, forget the bank, okay? okay. Let's say uh, I don't need the bank, okay? What, what are the other uh, ramifications of... Uh you know, of purchasing this property. What? Uh... Well, Eleni, what have you seen with contaminated soil? Um, well, first of all, it's it scares everybody away. Right. So unless you have, you know, well, what I call our, uh, you know, our flippers or investors who are willing to take on a property, you know, as is, uh, without legal warranty and they'll pay you cash, great. If you have a regular buyer, they're going to be scared. So you're going to have to take some um, responsibility and do the right tests. Right. If you're the, you know, the, the tests have to be done, the reports have to be there, the and then somebody has done. to be aware. They, right. You just test. have to declare it. The person who's buying it has okay. to be aware um, that, you know, of what the situation is. But I'm just saying, is, is that possible that this property becomes, uh, you know, legit? And I mean, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. And uh, sure, you know, of course, the long term. Uh, Absolutely. It would. Uh. Absolutely. And we see that all the time. It, you know, this is we live in a city where oil tanks uh, are very, common. very, very common yeah, and right. oil tanks leak and there's right. contamination. And sometimes it's a simple fix and other times it becomes a lot more complicated. Mm -hmm. So it's important to, uh, you know, you, you got to find out what the costs are going to be associated right. to it right. and then make a proper decision. Right. Um, we've had clients, like I said, who have bought Con properties with contaminated soil right. and they've remedied it and we've had other ones that basically are like hell no i'm not touching this you oh, know with yeah. a 10-foot pole but one thing is for sure if you plan on selling this property and it's got contaminated soil you, you gotta declare it you gotta way. declare it okay. and you're gonna have issues i see okay all right thank you john all for right. the call thank you very much. cheers you. take care um so it's 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 funny it's a it's a conversation that comes up all the time and yeah. what's what's even Stranger, I've actually had clients uh, when we're not typically not for duplexes and stuff like that. When we're talking about commercial, where they basically almost want to close their eyes to the fact that there might be some sort of a contamination in the soil because they think that if they actually admit to it or if they actually do the test, then they're liable for it moving into the future. Yeah. But as far as I'm concerned, I mean, you know, it's like burying your head 
In we the, see it uh, very, very often, by the way, in duplexes. Saint Laurent, Ahuntsic, Montreal North, all these, you know, areas. But you know, we'll we'll touch more on that next week when we do a, a show on inspection. So we don't have a lot of time left, Terry. Um, you know, this is our last show. I think we're going to do about this federal budget. Yes. We did, you know, one last week. Um, if people have questions for us, obviously, you know, going forward in terms of mortgages purchasing, please give us a call at the office. But for now, let's leave people with, uh, you know, something to think about. What is your advice? Uh, going forward, like let's look at existing homeowners and new home buyers. So first and foremost, um, when we're looking at new home buyers, you want to, you know, the government is giving us this possibility to have $35,000 uh, from an RRSP. By all means, let's use it. Let's use Oof, it. Okay. And there's ways of structuring that. So again, we are specialists in that. This is what we do. We help people structure their down payments, uh, whether it was the 20,000 once upon a time, then it went up to 25 and now we're at 35. Okay. This is, this is what we do. This is our, uh, you know, the way that we work at our office. Uh, so uh, you can give us a call and we'll definitely help you structure your down payments properly. Uh, the other thing is, is that if you're thinking about waiting for the purchase of a property. Or moving, the sale. Or the sale. But, you know, because yeah. you think that the new, you know, incentive program that the government is going to give you months from now is going to actually uh, help. Yeah. Don't. How about doing the math, right? You Instead of waiting, exactly. I always tell people, uh, I think you work the same way. You're thinking about buying a house, I don't know, in the fall. Well, mm -hmm. don't wait until September. Exactly. Start now. Come in and, you know, see a mortgage broker. See, you know, do the math before you decide. Exactly. A hundred percent. And uh, unfortunately, uh, people, sometimes they, they think that, you know, house prices are going to drop. So they're like, oh, you know, I'm going to wait till the house price. Now, I've had clients, they've waited 10 years for house prices to drop and they never did. Yeah. Eleni, we've run out of real estate. If people want to get a hold of you. Yeah, they can call the office 514-716-6188, uh, which is the real estate. They can reach uh, as well, 514-680-4674. Yeah. Uh, two numbers to serve everybody. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, newsonthego.ca. See you next week, everyone. Have a great week. The opinions expressed in the preceding program were provided for general information. You have till what time to sign up? What? 57. Okay, so I got it. I got it. Sorry, I just I have I got a text which I didn't get a chance to read, but I do have to read it. What Isn't is it? gas already from the ground? How does it contaminate <laughs> a property then? Explain. Oh man, could we we can't get into all that. Okay, for anyone <laughs> in Facebook land that is asking that same question, very simple. <laughs> Crude oil is how deep in the earth? Is he really like, going to explain this? Like. Now? miles and miles and miles it's not in groundwater it's not in anything like that if you take some crude oil and you dump it in some water i dare you to drink that water you know like uh it's obviously at that point tune in next week guys we're going to talk about inspections yeah what to inspect when you're inspecting cheers <laughs>